Good evening, and welcome to the Writer's Block. I'm your host, John Ronan, and I'm very happy to welcome you to what is now our 18th season of the Writer's Block. We are now one of the longest continuously running television cable shows in New England, or for, the, for that matter, perhaps in the entire world. 18 years is getting to be a long time, and we're very proud of that record. That means that a lot of people have helped over the decades, uh, including the lady who's at the control booth this evening, Seneca Nagello. Watch for all the credits at the end of the program because I'm very grateful to all of them for helping to bring you the writer's block over all of those years. Tonight, as we have for a few years, we're going to begin with the poetry winners of the Poetry Without Paper contest sponsored by the Gloucester Lyceum over the last school year. The winners, at least many of the winners, are here with us tonight, and we'll be talking with them in just a couple minutes. Before I talk to the uh, winners of the poetry contest, I want to remind you that we cast a pretty wide net as far as guests are concerned. We emphasize writers, of course, but we are open to other suggestions. We've had actors, we've had sculptors, we've had musicians. We cast a pretty wide net, as I say. So if you have ideas for guests on the writer's block, please watch for the address at the end of the program and get in touch with us if you can. I also want to remind you that past shows are available at the Sawyer Library, downtown Gloucester. You can go in and take out a program as you would a book, watch it at home, and then don't forget to uh, bring it back. Tonight, the poetry contest winners. The first level of poetry contest winners that I'm going to talk to tonight are the winners of the elementary competition. The winners of the elementary competition were, in order of their place, Phoebe Weissbloom from Harbor Light Montessori School, whose poem won first place. Her poem was The Midnight Clock. Second place winner was Kelly Hurd, who attends the Beeman Memorial School, or did last year when she won the competition. And her second place winning poem was The Beach. The third place winner was Kenna O'Malley, who was at West Parish School last year. Her winning third place poem was Waiting at the Window. Kenna could not be with us this evening, but we do have Kelly Hurd and Phoebe Weissblum. Hi, girls. Hi. Hey. Thanks for being here. You are, who are you? Kelly Hurd. You're Kelly Hurd, but the audience, they, they don't know that oh. out there. The thousands of people watching this. The new, Hi, I'm Kelly Hurd. Okay, that's good. That's very good. And what's your name? My name is Phoebe Weissblum. Phoebe Weissblum, okay. I want, I want to talk to you girls for a few minutes before I ask you to read the poems. Let me start with you, Phoebe. You go to Harbor Light Montessori. Is that right? Um, well, actually, I did last year when I won the prize, but um, I, sw I switched this year for oh. sixth grade to um, a school called Glen Urquhart. Glen Urquhart. Yeah. Okay. School. Tell me something about Harbor Light and your favorite teachers there, and then something about what you are uh, what you were experiencing at Glen Urquhart so far this year. All right. Well, you know, Harbor Light, it was a really great school. I was going there since preschool, um, and I was just ready for a change because um, I was moving to, like, a different room for, um, for sixth grade in, in um, Harbor Light, and I was just, you know, ready to move to Glen Urquhart. My favorite teacher at Harbor Light, um, there are a lot of really great teachers there. It's hard to decide. All teachers are good, right? Um, all teachers all are good. fantastic Wonderful. there. But um, I think... My favorite was um, Heidi. There's teachers go by their first names there. Um, Heidi Romangoli, I think. Heidi, I'm not sure what her last name is. Something with an R. And um, and so we just all call her Heidi. She taught music and drama. Um, she was really great, really fun. Um, and you know we did a lot of you know really challenging stuff with her, but it was really fun. And um, okay, let's hear it for Heidi. Okay, teacher at Harbor Light. We want to give credit to the teachers who, um, who bring these students along. So you told your parents that you were tired of Harbor Light, I'm out of here? Well, they told said? me, Harbor Light, I'm out of there. But, um, you know, I, 
Glenark Ridge is great, and I'm really, I'm, I'm perfectly happy with it. I'm, you know. And you've been there for a couple of weeks now this season, um, yeah. this year, yeah. this semester. Okay. Now, Kelly, I think you had a, a change of school as well, didn't you? Yes, tell, I did. Tell us about that. Well, um, since uh, Gloucester, I went to Beeman, and um, I was going to fifth grade, and like all the fifth graders throughout Gloucester, we're going, we're going to go to Fuller Fifth. Um, and all the all and we're like the only fifth grade we're the only kids like throughout the school except for like the preschool area but, but you know so you knew where you were going to change yeah but were you sure you knew where you were going to go last year is that I actually that wasn't pretty sure at first in the beginning of the year last year cuz at first I thought they were just going to close down fuller and yeah. like more kids were going to come in but like um as like the year went on, like all these stories and rumors were going on, and then we finally found out at the like, I forget when, that we were all going to Fuller. Yeah. Were, were you happy or sad about that? I was kind of a little bit of both, cause I knew like everybody at Beeman, and um, you know Fuller's a nice school, cause I've been there in preschool before, and um, but I was kind of um sad to leave to like be in different classes like wake away from my friends. So you're still getting used to that? Still getting used to it, but... Tell, tell me a yeah. good teacher you had at Beeman. Uh, Mr. Bamarito is my Bamarito? fourth grade teacher. He was, one, he was one of my favorite teachers. He'd like, he'd like, um, I don't know, there's just something so special about him. Like he'd always make jokes with us so randomly and be funny. He'd always, you know, give us work like normal teachers. They'd joke around with us at the end of the day. Good. Let's give Mr. Bomarito a hand. <laughs> teachers deserve that, don't they? Yeah. Okay. Now I want to ask you, because you're both writers, and now of course you're very famous writers, about your study habits. Do you study constantly, all day long, and never watch TV and never play, Kelly? Well, I do watch TV. <laughs> what do you watch? Uh, What's your favorite show? Probably Hannah Montana. Hannah Montana? What else? Uh, well, I don't know. It's kind of hard because I Maybe do watch I'll... TV. It's... Sometimes I go outside and play or something. Uh, this is or the just... writer's block. Should I should ask you yeah. who you like to read. I don't know. I have a lot of favorite authors. Like there's um, Kate DiCamilla, I think it was. Who wrote Despero? I think it was uh, Katie Camilla. Uh -huh. She wrote Despero and Because of Wind Dixie. And um, I really enjoy her, her books. And then there's Raw Doll books yeah, that I like. Yeah. You like him? Yeah. And there's like other writers too. I have many, sev I have like several favorite writers. That's good. I'm going to ask uh, Phoebe the same question. Who do you like to read, Phoebe? Okay. Um, I like I like the J.K. Rowling series, um, the Harry Potter books, and um, there's this um, series called um, A Series of Unfortunate Events by Lemony Snicket, and um, it's it's pretty well known and it's um, they're really good books. They're really funny. You know they have they have really great you know humor and stuff, and um, just really well written well written books. And you know I like all books. I Lemony think. Snicket's a wonderful name, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Do you ever watch TV? I do. By mistake, of course. Yeah, right? never, what, I'd never what, do that on purpose. What do you What do you actually watch when you watch TV by mistake? Um, by mistake, I would watch. Uh, I watch like game shows sometimes. Like, uh, like there's this show called The Wheel of Fortune that I saw a couple of times, and it was very interesting. And um, and like reality TV, and there's this show on TLC called um, What Not to Wear, and it's about like people who have really bad fashion sense, and like they these two. Um, people and they, you know, they give them money to shop for, you know, better clothes with the advice of these two people. Who are, yeah. I think I've seen that. Yeah. By mistake, of course. Yeah. Now I want to ask you two girls if you would read uh, your uh, poems. First, Phoebe, The Midnight Clock, and then Kelly, The Beach. Would you read your poem for us, Phoebe? Okay. Do you have? You need this copy? Yes, thank you. Okay. Okay, this is called The Midnight Clock. Tick tock, the midnight clock, will life turn out soft or hard as a rock? Tick tock, the midnight clock, will the door to my dreams be easy to open or will it have a lock? Tick tock, the midnight clock, 
Can I pass through my troubles silently or will I have to talk? Tick tock, the midnight clock. It never ends, it never stops. Very nice. Let's give Phoebe a hand. <laughs> have you discovered any answers to those questions since you wrote this poem? Um, you know, it's just, you know, not not really, not not in depth answers. Um just, you know, life moves along and I will someday find the answer to all those questions. And you know, Maybe. Uh, I still don't know the answers to these questions. <laughs> I, I hope I will at some point. Now, Kelly, you wrote a really wonderful, uh, short, succinct poem. Is it? A, I think it's a haiku. haiku. Mm -hmm. And I want to ask you if you would read that for us. Yes. The Beach. Warmth from golden sand, beautiful waves of glory, wonder in a view. Very, very nice. Let's hear that applause <laughs> for Kelly. Now tell us what a haiku is, Kelly. Oh, it's um, a very short poem. It has the first line has five syllables, the next line has seven syllables, and the last line has five syllables. So it's five, seven, difficult five. to keep track yeah. of. Yeah. Did you have to Does rewrite have to this a number of times, keep counting? Actually, I didn't. Surprisingly, didn't? I didn't. It just came out? It just like came out. I counted the syllables as I went along, and I was thinking of like a word, of like the words, and they just came out. And do you like going to the beach? Yes, I do. You live in a good city for going to the beach, don't you? Yeah, because I actually live by a beach so oh, I do? can walk to. Which beach? Uh, there's Cambridge Beach and Lighthouse Beach. It's good. Across the bridge um, in Anasquam. I want to ask you both, uh, let me start with this question with uh, Kelly. Are you writing more poems? Uh, I'm trying to think of some more, but it's kind of hard. It's like I'm trying to think of some more, but I have to do homework and stuff like that. I'm like trying to think of some more, but do you get poetry writing or writing as homework? Do you have to write things for homework? Uh, not yet. So far, not yet. I did last year though, because um we were supposed to write ten poems at the end of the year for the report cards, and um that was one of my ten poems. And this is one of the poems. Mm -hmm. oh, good. It was my second one. Good. Are you going to enter the contest next year? Yes. And are you going to enter the contest next year, Phoebe? Yes, I will. And are you working on anything else right now? Um, I, I'm not like, I'm, I don't have like, it's, I'm not really that professional when it comes to like writing poems. If, if an idea comes to my head, I'll write about it and it'll kind of turn into a poem. And um, I, yeah, I'm always doing poetry. It, it, you know, I'm not like, I don't have like this like schedule that I'm, you know, I don't, I, I can't like, I don't like guarantee that, you know, that I'll, I can just, I can just write, start. That I, can, that I can just sit down and start writing something that's going to be totally fantastic. But, you know, I can, I can sit can't. down and, and, and write and, you know, and have fun with it. I, th I don't think many people have that guarantee. They can sit down and write something great every yeah. time you sit down. That's tough. Yeah. That's a tough order. Do you want to say anything else, Kelly or Phoebe? Oh. Do you want to say hello to anybody out there in television land? Uh, hi, Oprah. <laughs> She's waving back right now. Sure. Hi, Oprah. Well, I want everybody again to give a big round of applause for Kelly and Phoebe, and thank you very much for coming up to uh, be on the Writers' Club. Thank you. It's very pleasurable. Now, I want to ask you if you take off your microphone carefully oh, and just put it on the. So, how did she do that? Oh, she's got it up to your balls. Well, if you just. Yank it out and set it on the chair, and then we will be all set for the next guest. Thank you. Now, uh, am I, on? I am on this camera. Now we're going to go to the middle school uh, winners, and I'm going to ask the representative of the middle school winners, Elizabeth McDougall, to come on up. Sure. That's good. Would you sit right there in the middle chair? And I'm going to put that. I'll make sure I don't walk off with mine here. Put this kind of up under. That should work. Okay, good. Now, Elizabeth, 
I want to point out, as we were talking before, that when you entered the contest last year, you were in eighth grade, and now mm -hmm. you're up in high school, you're a freshman. Yes. How is that? Now, that you're the third person we've had today to talk about, and we can talk about changing schools. How was that for you? Um, well, it was a pretty big change because I was homeschooled at first, um, and then I rushed into high school. But, um, yeah, I have to get used to the schedule and everything, um, and the running around. But, yeah. and which high school are you in? Gloucester High. Gloucester High. So this is an easy question. Who was your favorite teacher when you were homeschooled? Actually, I went to tutorials. So besides my mother, um, at tutorials I had two teachers, um, one Mr. Drummond and Mr. Westrate, who was my English teacher. Drummond? Yeah. Um, yeah. Mr. Drummond was my Latin teacher, and Mr. Westrate taught me English. Oh, let's give them a hand. Mr. Drummond, <laughs> Mr. Westrate. And I drop my drop my sheet of paper and my glasses here. Tell me uh, if you've uh, had any encounters with great teachers at uh, the high school so far. Um, after two weeks. <laughs> yes. So far, from uh, what I can tell is, I don't know. I like all my teachers. Um, so yeah. And what are you what are you taking? Okay, like all my courses. Sure. Okay. Well, I take English. I take biology. I take geometry. I'm. I forget what I take. <laughs> um, Physics, chemistry, Spanish. I take chorus. Chorus. I take French. Um, and I take tech and bio. So that's a lot. That's a heavy load. Yeah. And you're just you're beginning French, or did you have French at no, home? No, I I'm beginning French right now. Ça va bien? Oui. Tell me about your writing schedule. Do you write every day? And uh, who inspired you to, to write poetry? Um, I don't know. I always loved it um, as far as I can remember. Um, and I loved reading and everything. Um, my older sister would write poetry a lot. And then she, that's probably what get, got me started in the first place. But I've, I love poetry for as, as far as back as I can remember. So. Did your parents read to you when you were little? Yeah, a lot. So. And, okay, that's good. I, now, I want to go to your poem and ask you if you would read that for us. And, oh, I'm, I forgot. I want to say who the other winners are um, of the middle school level uh, who could not be here. Uh, the first place winner was Kazira Slocum from St. Anne's for her poem, I Dream with a Reason to Wake Up. The third place winner was Zoe Paddock from O'Malley, whose poem was titled Self Portrait. And the second place winner was our guest tonight, Elizabeth McDougall, for her poem, The Ruins. Now, I'd love it if you could read that poem for us. Okay. Um, the Ruins. What once a mountain was, I see it scattered, crumbled, spread. Now down a thing that once I know held high a lofty head. White crest above it once looked down on trees attempting climb. To highest peak yet failed for air, so scarce in such a climb. Yet down the rain and up the shock of low terrestrial quake. Its vast terrain now crumbled rock and lost forever peak. While sky looked down, soft lichen grew and o'er the ruins groped. They timid at what once was great now boldly scaled its slopes. Small birds of air now flew above what once they found too high, and dropped the seeds, the starts of trees that in the ruins lie. At last the grass crept over the sod, and quiet made its place. And what was once a demigod is gone without a trace. Very nice. Let's hear it for Elizabeth poem. What inspired uh, this poem uh, titled Ruins? Um, well, actually, I was up in New Hampshire um, and visiting my grandparents, and I was wandering around in the woods with my sister and I saw um, just like these big rocks and everything um, and then grass and like I saw the trees just growing seemingly out of just the rocks and everything and I don't know I just used my imagination and I pictured it as this big mountain once that like, crumbled down. So, so this wasn't an old uh, structure that had fallen down, an old mm -mm. granite uh, home or something? No, nope, mountain. mountain. Mountain and ruins. I like that idea. Do you write every day? Um, 
well, I try to like creative like writing like that I choose. I only have time about to write once a week about sometimes I'll have a week where I write like a long time like each day, but um, yeah, averages to about once a week. And uh, who are you reading, if you have time to read anybody, either um, for school or on your own? Well, who I like to read is, uh, I like to read Dickens, and I like to read Emily Dickinson, and... So you go back and forth, prose and poetry? Yeah. I, like, yeah. And do you ever by accident watch TV? Occasionally, but hardly. What, uh, what have you seen on television? Actually, I only watch Arthur, so. What? Arthur. I'm not familiar with Arthur, but we got some laughs out of the audience, so I guess I'm the only one in the room who doesn't, who doesn't uh, know Arthur very well. It's just, it's just by accident, I'm sure, though, right? Um, yeah, There's not sure. much out there. There's not much out there, but I'm interested in what uh, the winners of these contests uh, do, because uh, uh, whatever you're doing, everybody else should do it, because you're doing pretty well. So I want to thank you for being on the show, Elizabeth, and um, ask you if you have anything to follow up to say. Is there anybody you want to say hello to? Any statements you want to make? Um, <laughs> I don't know. Do you feel really strongly about the Gloucester Fisherman's football season? Um, Do you want to say something about that? Well, I don't, I don't, I'm not that supportive of sports, but... Um, I can say go team anyway, even though I don't know what Absolutely, it is. absolutely. Go team. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now, sure, come on up, Alexandra. Now we have one representative from the high school group. And I want to, uh, uh, would you mic yourself? If I talk loud enough, do I have to use it? Oh, yes. Okay, I'll use it. Oh, yes. Can you put it put it up here in your little yeah. pal? Yeah. That'll be yeah cool. uh, can you put it? Is that good? Yeah, that's good. All right. You'll hear from Seneca if it's not good. Now, the high school winners uh, of the Poetry Without Paper competition were first place Alexandra Lees, with whom I'll be speaking in just a minute, who is from Gloucester High School, and she won first place for her poem, A Girl of the Sea. Sadly, the other two winners could not be with us. Uh, one is in college and one had something else to do. The second place winner is Leah Parisi, who was a senior at high school, at Gloucester High School last year and has since gone off to higher education, <laughs> as you can imagine. Third place, uh, third place competition was won by Lacey Sidlowski. Uh, who was in Gloucester High School uh, last year, and her poem was titled Music. I think I forgot to mention Leah's title was uh, the poem Broken Glass. So those are the three winners, and we have one stellar example of the, of the high school uh, winning group here today, Alexandra Lees. I'm flattered. <laughs> you should be. This is a wonderful opportunity. There's millions of people out there going to watch the show, and you're going to be, well, of course, you're already pretty famous. <laughs> for winning this competition. Uh, I want to ask you, Alexandra, uh, how, uh, what teachers you like, and uh, if you could name a couple of them, we want to recognize them. What teachers I've had throughout high school that I liked? Sure. Well, or, I've, or even before. Yeah, I've, I've only really been in the Gloucester uh, school, public schools for uh, two years now. I went to uh, Rockport High School in my freshman year. And... Um, I really think I like, I've always liked my, my favorite teachers have always been my, um, my English teachers. Uh -huh. And I have to say, it's a toss up between the honors history teacher, I mean honors English teacher I had this year and um, the teacher I had my freshman year, Miss Lamphier. She's been teaching at Rockport High School for a while now, but um, she was wonderful. And who is your the other teacher? Um, his name is Mr. Cook. He teaches uh, honors English for uh, 11 and 12. Okay, let's give Miss Lamphere and Mr. Cook a round of applause. They deserve it. Okay. They deserve it. They deserve it? Um, good. We want to recognize teachers because mm -hmm. I think without good teachers, we wouldn't have good students. Uh, uh, tell me what you're taking at the high school now and, uh, um, and say anything else you want about uh, reading and writing and 
yeah. what you're doing? Uh, right now I'm in the high school. I'm taking honors English and a few other honors courses, and I'm trying to take Spanish honors four, which is the highest Spanish class that Gloucester offers right now. It's a very, very difficult class, and um, I'm taking oceanography. But um, I, I really am focusing on English because uh, I really am interested in being an English teacher. So I really appreciate teachers a lot. I've done a lot of work with children, and um, I, really? I'm, a, I'm a child aid. Um, the Gloucester program offers, Gloucester High School offers this wonderful program for young children ages, um, I believe, two to five, that uh, gives them inexpensive education in a preschool run by high school students and a few teachers. It's really wonderful. It's good so, practice. So you're one of the yeah, these and teachers. um. I'm also really actively involved in the drama program. Um, it's the GHS drama program. It's, you mentioned that before yeah, the show. We're definitely uh, vying. What are, you, what are you doing for them now? Uh, right now, today, um, Elizabeth and I, who was just on the show a minute ago, um, we both auditioned for the new show for the fall, which is called Check, Please. It's a comedy, so that'll be really interesting. Cross my fingers. I hope we get in. So. That's great. Mm -hmm. Now, tell me uh, something about uh, the Spanish class. I'm interested in that because mm -hmm. I think the United States is the third or fourth largest Spanish-speaking yeah, country in the world a now. Lot. Uh, did you take Spanish uh, through all of your high school? Years? Yes, I've taken Spanish all through high school. And and this is more literature and more fluid conversational. Uh, mm -hmm. emphasis? Yeah, definitely. There's a lot of talking involved. Say something for us in Spanish. <laughs> Hola, me llamo Ali, habla español, así, así. Um, perdón, mi, um, perdón, eh, cuando tú hablo, no, bien. <laughs> and I, I'm really not. That was, if anybody's watching that speaks Spanish, they would probably like, that's probably like baby Spanish. I am, um, I'm not very quick with it at the moment because I've just been going through four hours of auditions, but... Well, it sounded good to me. <laughs> uh, I speak no Spanish, but it sounded very good. Yeah, to our me. teacher, she speaks uh, rapid Spanish to us. She says that um, if we talk at, uh, she talks at a normal speed to us, eventually our brains will catch up. But right now they're a little weak. They're not they're, quite getting where they're supposed to be. Have you visited uh, a Spanish-speaking country? No, that's one of my things I'd really love to do. Where, were you gonna, where would you go? Um, I'd probably go to Spain because I love Barcelona. That would be really cool. But um, I'm really involved in the drama program. I really enjoy that. I've, I've been in a lot of the productions since I came, and I sort of just jumped headfirst in when I came in my sophomore year. I really enjoy drama a lot. Good. That's one of the things I'm really involved in. Good. Good. That's good to hear. I want to ask you, if you would now, to read your poem, mm -hmm. A Girl of the Sea, and then we can talk about its background. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, a Girl of the Sea. The sky is a deep ebony. The sea slaps the sand gently. The wind is cold and biting. The stars sparkle and dance. The moon is pregnant with light. A girl lies on the beach. Her clothes, hair, skin are brushed by the wind. She is shivering, but she doesn't notice. She is part of everything. Her skin is moonlight. Her hair is burnt dune grass. Her curves are the moon's curves. Her eyes are the stars. Her breath is the waves. Her soul is the sea, swirling, gliding, caressing, the earth, the creatures, embracing the world in a blanket of peace. Very nice. Let's hear it for her. Thank you. Make sure we give all of our uh, poets a good uh, round of applause. Thank you, Alexandra. Can you tell us, tell me something and tell the audience something about uh, where the ideas for that poem came from? Yeah, it actually took a lot of work. I've, I've written poems since I was probably about in fifth grade, but I sort of did it really on and off. Like I can say that the last time I really wrote poems was in fifth grade, and then I started writing again this year, actually, because um, I had an assignment that they asked us to write a poem. And they're like, OK, just write a poem. And in the past, I'd sort of waited for inspiration to strike. But I actually find that it's much um, better if you just start writing. I find that that's really useful if you just start writing and you, um, your thoughts will eventually come out. I, like, I think of a lot of things in my head, a lot about um, different themes for poems. And I sort of, when I write them down, it, it comes out. But Girl of the Sea, um, it's actually Girl of the Sea. And 
I think that it was a typo and they wrote a girl of the ski sea, but I think in poetry one word means a lot. But so explain explain the typo again. Um, it, it's it, instead of a girl of the sea, it's girl of the sea. Oh. And um, I actually I I spent a really long time on that poem. Um, one of my my absolute most favorite place in the world is um, the beach at night when no one else is around. Just lying down in the sand and listening to the waves is so relaxing to me. And uh, I like to do it in the winter because then there's not as many tourists around. We love tourists. <laughs> we love tourists, but it's nice and peaceful. Good, good, nice good and politics. There. Yes, good. exactly. We, we but, all um, love tourists. But I, I, it's such a, it's such a, uh, it's such a difficult idea to get down on paper that I don't usually write more than one version of a poem, but I think I wrote about four. And it's just so hard to get these ideas out because it's very hard writing lyrical poems because this is a lyrical poem, obviously, um, to not seem affected or sort of um, uh, get the tone wrong. It's really easy to get a tone wrong when you're writing poetry. Yeah, I'm glad you uh, pointed that out. Poetry is difficult, and you spend mm -hmm. hours and hours and hours making a line that looks like yeah. looks like you just wrote it in a second. Yeah. And um, I think uh, I think you're right that you have to sit down and start writing. Mm. And... Uh, I think it was Hemingway who said it's always important to put in the time and then you can be there yeah. when the lightning strikes. But it's kind of a, a spiritual poem for me because um, I, I really connect with nature a lot and um, a lot of my friends have asked me who's the girl in the poem and um, I like to say it's someone else but it's kind of like a really like perfect version of me like a really like spiritual version like a prettier more spiritual version of me. It's like I don't know the the uh, poem to me is kind of really like holy and spiritual. I just really connect with the ocean because I've lived, I was born on the ocean and I've lived near the ocean most of my life. Uh, what do you mean by the line, she is part of everything? Well, I feel when I, when I, um, I lie down on the beach when no one else is around, I really feel part of the world and I just, I feel like everything's much more than me because I feel as a teenager, um, and I admit it, a lot of times you become self-centered because you feel like your life is more important than anything else. But when you sort of take the time to look at how amazing nature is, you find that you're a really small being on this amazingly big planet and you just feel sort of part of everything when you relax and let yourself go. It's really Do you think that's a little frightening? Um, sometimes. You look at the stars when you're on the beach and mm, think uh, how far away they are and how big they are and how none of them know that we're here. <laughs> Maybe they do. We don't know. Maybe they do. Maybe they do. That's true. Uh, I want to ask you, as I ask the other students, something about your writing and studying habits. Oh, I am. Um, I don't. I find I write only well when I'm not stressed out, and I've had a lot of things going on this year with homework and stuff. But one thing, I don't write. Po I'll probably produce. Last year, I made a lot. Like. Um, I don't really like write poems specifically for a contest. Like I just I saw oh there's a contest and I just dug through my papers and found my best poems and I just judged them out and put them in the contest. But uh, I only I mostly write I enjoy writing in a journal about my life and my mother uh, Pat Mandel um, or Patricia Mandel she uh, wrote memoirs and was a travel writer for many years so I think I sort of take after her and I really enjoy writing a lot. I mean, she's a much better writer than I am, but I really take after her, I think. And that's why you're emphasizing English. Yes, exactly. Your energy into yeah. English at the high I mean, my, my mother started reading to me when I came home from the hospital, so I've always had a real big love of reading. What did she read? Uh, I think that the first thing she read to me was Beatrix Potter. Uh, did you remember that mm -hmm. ride back from yeah. the hospital? Well, no, I wasn't. I, I, that's what she tells me. She tells me that that's what she read to well, me. Well, that's I a good choice, it. Beatrix Potter. I believe it. I don't think she lied. I she, don't think she, so. might have, she read a Remy a magazine, and I don't remember, but I'm pretty sure it's Beatrix Potter. Uh, who, who do you like to read now? Um, I, I love Philip Pullman. He's my favorite author. He wrote, um, he wrote A Golden Compass in his Dark Materials series. It's just so brilliant. It's all about um, theology and like the meaning of things, and it's kind of like a, it's off Milton's uh, Paradise Lost, but it's a more like easy to understand story for like I, I first read it when I was in fifth grade and I didn't understand all the theology and stuff but now I understand a lot more and I find it really really interesting. Was, was that produced as a play or adapted into um, a play? It was adapted into a play. I heard that it wasn't that wonderful but I think it could be. But um, my favorite children's author because I've worked with kids a lot. I, I um, worked at a summer camp in, uh, owned by the University of Rhode Island called um, the, it's called the Alton Jones Campus, and I work with kids ages um, 
eight to 12. So I had a lot of like practice uh, teaching and stuff this summer. But um, the book I love to read to them is, uh, it's called uh, The Phantom Tollbooth by Norton Jester. I just think it's it's a modern day classic. It's brilliant. It's I don't know if a lot. It's it, the movie came out sometime in the seventies or so, but it's all about um, it's all about this boy named Milo, and he finds himself in this world sort of like Alice in Wonderland. It's sort of like a male version of Alice in Wonderland, but it's the Phantom it, Toll. There's so many puns and plays on words, but it's sort of commentary on modern day time. Like there's the census taker who like instead of like taking your censuses like where you live and how you were born and stuff like that, or like where you were born, he he sort of like muddles you up until you're all confused, which is kind of a commentary on census takers. Now, if anyone's watching this that's a census taker, I admire your job very much, but um, it's it's all, it, there's lots of puns, like the weatherman isn't really a weatherman, he's the weatherman, so he wants to know like whether things will happen or not. I don't, it's just really witty and funny. I loved it ever since I was little. And who is that? Who's the author? Again? Norton Jester. Norton Jester. I want to do a time check here uh, to see if I'm watching the clock, but Okay, I think uh, we're going to uh, we're going to begin to wrap up here. Okay. Uh, thanks very much for being with us, uh, Alexandra, and I want to thank and give Alexandra a hand. If you just stay there for a second and give the audience a hand. I want to thank all of you out there, the millions in our audience, for watching the Writer's Block tonight. If you've learned something about what the best writers in Gloucester are doing and why they won the different prizes and the poetry without paper competition, then the writer's block has done its job. Thanks for being with us, and I hope to see you again next week on the writer's block. Good night. <laughs>